Posse Posse Packer Nation. Welcome to another episode of Packers, a podcast where you don't have to pack time, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. Owner of not only the Packers, but also the Bears. Grassi, and today we are going to break down the Packers postgame after defeating the Chicago Bears 28-19 to in a game that went back and forth. The Packers struggled for a while, but we had a superstar emerge, and he's been just crushing it for the past four games, and that is Christian Watson. And honestly, just watching him play over these past four games, but really highlighted yesterday, they got something special. Like, he is such a dynamic playmaker, like, whether it's on the end around and he just gets a tiny bit of space and he is absolutely gone. Whether he can turn a small play, like the little route he ran for Jordan Love and take that to the house, the guy is an absolute stud. He has eight touchdowns in the past four games, and the future is very bright for one Christian Watson. So regardless of how this season has gone for the Packers, they still have some playoff hopes, though. They are dwindling, and also the tie between the Commanders and the Giants didn't help things. There is a lot to take away from this and go, oh, they could be in good hands for years to come, depending on what happens in the next couple of seasons. But let's kind of go through this game because uh, it was a whirlwind. The first quarter for the Green Bay Packers, they had a total of one rushing yard. Didn't really utilize Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones was kind of in and out with an injury that he was dealing with, with his leg, his shin area. He came in for a few games, but this really was the A.J. Dillon show. 18 carries for 93 yards, had a touchdown as well. A.J. Dillon kind of just getting the bulk of the carries, just power rushing, wearing down that Bears defense, and it did the job. However, Aaron Jones was able to get enough to get over 5,000 rushing yards total for his career. He's only the fourth Packers running back in history to get that accolade. So a big congratulations to Aaron Jones. And speaking of records being broken, finally, after being tied with the Bears frickin' frackin' all season, the Green Bay Packers now have the all-time win record with 787 wins for their franchise. So that means the Green Bay Packers are the greatest franchise in the history of the NFL. And la, 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 I will not hear otherwise. Taking a look at some other stats, Aaron Rodgers, 18 for 31, 182 yards, one touchdown, zero sacks on the day. The offensive line did a really nice job giving protection to Aaron Rodgers. There was definitely some frustration because the offense just really couldn't get it going in the first half. That changed in the fourth quarter. Now the Packers offense was shut out the first quarter and the third quarter, which is a little concerning considering how bad the Bears defense has been as of late. But overall, it's a good day for the offensive line. But let's talk about one Christian Watson. Three catches, 48 yards, one touchdown, and also one run, 46 yards, and a touchdown. Christian Watson, I just can't sing this kid's praises enough. I mock draft him to the Packers, and he was just that explosive threat. And while I cannot wait to see Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson on the field at the same time, which hopefully we'll see against the Rams, this guy is such a dynamic playmaker that it's something that I feel like you haven't seen in Green Bay for quite some time. And that's not to dismiss any playmakers that have come before him, but Devontae Adams, for example. Devontae Adams, phenomenal wide receiver. He's out there doing amazing things over in Vegas. He's freaking scoring a million touchdowns. And he was Mr. Reliable in Green Bay. Doesn't matter if it was double coverage. Doesn't matter if it was sideline grabs. The guy just did it all. But you're not really using him on end arounds. Christian Watson is an all-around weapon. You could use him in the run game, which he scored a couple of touchdowns this season already. He can be a deep threat. He can be the guy where you just run a slant over the middle and he could turn that into a 20-yard gain or a touchdown. That's what I mean. And the fact that he is gone from this guy who was having trouble with drops, injuries, etc., to now eight touchdowns in the past four games... That's pretty incredible. So much so that Aaron Rodgers was asked about this during his post-game press conference, in which the reporter said, hey, does like Watson's development make you excited about potentially returning next year? And he said, just seeing his progression has been so impressive. It's just the beginning for him. And there was another comment that was made, which was interesting. Rodgers said, but the feeling has to be mutual about his return. So we'll kind of see what that means down the line. The Packers really can't trade him without Aaron Rodgers saying yes. Aaron Rodgers has to decide not to retire. And that contract is likely going to keep Aaron Rodgers regardless. So 
we'll kind of see how that plays out. But the point is, is that the Packers have a stud and a playmaker in Christian Watson, and I cannot wait to see him develop. Meanwhile, Al Lazard was targeted the most, was 5 for 67. He had a pretty solid game. And let's talk about the defense. The ups and downs of the defense definitely continued for the Packers, especially in the first half. And considering the first drive of the Bears' offense, I thought it was going to be a long day because it looks like they just watched the Eagles tape from the previous Sunday and they were ready to run all over the Packers. And listen, the Bears, they had the number one rushing attack in the entire NFL. So this was to be anticipated. And considering how bad the Packers' rush defense is, yeah, I, I thought that this could have been a problem. But Justin Fields, 20 for 25, 254 yards, had zero touchdowns through the air and two interceptions, was sacked also zero times, so neither team had a pass rush. On the ground, six for 71 and had a touchdown. That was, of course, on the first drive. Dave Montgomery, 14 for 61, also had a touchdown. EQ, three for 85, had a big play over Jair Alexander where he burned him. And Cole Komet hauled in six catches for 72 yards. So... The rushing attack definitely worked against the Packers. The two interceptions were definitely costly. But the thing that stood out to me about the Packers' defense was Jair Alexander. Had a great interception later in the game of Justin Fields. Absolutely love that. But got burned twice in this game. One by Equinemius St. Brown and the second Nikhil Harry. I forgot that Nikhil Harry was even on the Bears. And I'm pretty sure the Bears forgot that Nikhil Harry was even on their team. And so that was a little bit concerning because this is not the first time that this has happened this season. And I think it speaks to, again, the bigger problem here. Joe Barry, not the answer at defensive coordinator. I hope that he's gone at the end of the year. He's probably not going to be. But I hope that he is just because I think the Packers need to find somebody a little bit more dynamic because it doesn't scare them. So the scheme is a problem, but it's also players not executing at all. We don't really have any pass rushers right now. I know we don't have Rashawn Gary, but the pass rush has been terrible pretty much all season. The run defense is a problem. And while we did get Devondre Campbell back, it was definitely solid. There's players that are just not playing well right now. So it's an overall problem for the defense, which is supposed to be a highlight of this 2022 Packers team. And so overall, that's pretty disappointing. So where are we now? Well, the Packers cannot win the NFC North. So that should come to a surprise to absolutely nobody. We are currently five and eight. And like I said earlier, the Commanders and Giants tying kind of really throws a wrench in the Packers playoff plans. The Packers have their bye week finally next week, so they can't lose. Then the remaining few games are not easy ones. We do have the Rams, which should be winnable, but then you got the Dolphins, you got the Vikings, you got the Lions, and considering how the Lions are playing and the Vikings just keep on winning, it's going to be tough. So I imagine Aaron Rodgers is not going to get shut down unless they are mathematically eliminated, which I don't think can happen next week. We do need some teams to falter to even have a prayer. But quite honestly, like that's not even the goal right now. I want the Packers to keep on winning, and I hope that they do. And if there's playoffs, great. If there's not, that sucks. But the development of some of these key players has been really important. Maybe we'll see some Jordan Love depending on how the rest of the games go. But some well-deserved rest coming next week, and then hopefully we'll see guys like Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson on the field at the same time. And maybe, just for a few games, we can see what the potential of this offense really can be. But before we get out of here, I want to do a big shout and thank you to some brand new patrons and YouTube members. First on the Patreon side of things, we have Sean and Stacy Lowe. A big shout out and thank you to you all. And over on the YouTube side of things, joining the Grassy Posse Plus, we have Micah Goebel. We have Mr. Booterbach. We have Graham Lammy. We have Guyver2391. We have Brennan Halloran. We have Chris Smith. We have Marquise Richardson and Lurk11. A big shout out and thank you to you all. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. How'd you feel about yesterday's game? Let me know. You can always find me at TomGrossyComedy.com or at TomGrossyComedy. All social media you see down below. Check out podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, and of course YouTube. And a big shout and thank you to all the patrons over at Patreon.com slash TomGrossyComedy and the YouTube members. But thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassy. And as always, Go Pack Go!